plant life. In our surroundings, we have number of plants and trees. They may differ in shape and size, but all the flowering plants have some common characteristics. Basically, all the flowering plants are similar because all plants possess root, stem, leaf, flower and fruit. A typical flowering plant such as mustard plant consists of two main systems. One, a system below the soil is called the root system and it consists of the main root, secondary root and root hairs. Know this. Till now, scientists have identified more than 2,60,000 species of angiospermic plants. 2. The system above the ground which we see is called the shoot system. The shoot system consists of stem, leaves, flowers and fruits. We will learn about the leaf and the flower parts of a plant in details. The leaf Leaf is one of the most important part of the shoot. It is called the kitchen or food factory of the plant. It is thin, flat, green, expanded structure which is concerned with the manufacture of food. It arises from the node of the stem and has a bud called axillary bud in its axil. External structure a typical leaf mainly consists of these parts. 1. Leaf blade or lamina The flat green part of a leaf is called the leaf blade or lamina. It is generally thin and expanded structure which receives the maximum sunlight. It contains green pigment, the chlorophyll which is essential for photosynthesis. The leaf blade has a network of veins which are further divided into fine veins called veinlets. Veins conduct water to the leaves and transport prepared food from the leaves to the other parts of the plant. 2. Petiole It is a stalk by the leaf by which the leaf is attached to the stem of a plant. The petiole extends in the leaf blade as a midrib and joins the leaf to the stem. Its main function is to keep the leaf in such a position so that it gets maximum sunlight and air. Leaves having petioles are called petiolate and the leaves without petioles are called sessile. 3. Leaf base Leaf base is a basal part of leaf through which leaf is attached to the stem. Venation The arrangement of veins and veinlets of the leaf blade is called venation. Venation is of two types, reticulate venation and parallel venation. 1. Reticulate venation When the veins and veinlets are irregularly distributed forming a network, it is called Reticulate venation. This kind of venation is found in the leaves of mango, banyan, and mustard. 2. Parallel venation. When veins run parallel to each other from base to apex in the leaf blade, it is called parallel venation. Leaves of wheat, palm, banana, rice, and maize have parallel venation. Activity. Collect 10 different types of leaves, dry them by pressing between newspapers. Paste them on herbarium sheet. Observe their venation, shape and margin of the leaf. Kinds of leaves On the basis of lamina, leaves are of two kinds, simple leaf and compound leaf. 1. Simple leaf It consists of single and undivided lamina without any cuts. In some cases, leaf blade is slightly incised, example, leaves of mango, mustard, banyan, etc. 2. Compound leaf When lamina is cut down up to the midrib or petiole to form many leaflets, 
such a leaf is called a compound leaf the stalk or main stem of a compound leaf is called rashes example leaves of neem tamarind etc arrangement of leaves the arrangement of the leaves on the stem or branch is called phyllotaxy the leaves are arranged in such a way that they get maximum sunlight leaves may be arranged in the following patterns alternate when one leaf is present at a node that is opposite to the previous leaf the leaves are arranged at definite gap around the stem example mustard sunflower opposite when two leaves develop at a node lying opposite to each other example tulsi guava world when more than two leaves develop at each node and are arranged in a circle example nerium oleander function of a leaf 1 the main function of leaf is the synthesis of food with the help of chlorophyll carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight by the process of photosynthesis 2 the leaves perform gaseous exchange through small pores on their surface called stomata the leaf of victoria regia can bear the weight of a child 3 the excess water in the form of water vapor is removed from the leaves through stomata and the process is called transpiration four in some cases the leaves are used as food materials modifications of a leaf sometimes the entire or part of the leaf is modified to perform special functions these may be one leaf tendril In some weak stemmed plants the leaf is modified into a tendril which helps the plant in climbing example sweet pea smilax to leaf spine in the leaves of xerophytes desert plants like cactus the leaves are modified into spines the spines prevent water loss during transpiration example opuntia 3 scale leaves these leaves store food in water and become thick and fleshy example onion 4 insectivorous the leaves of some plants are modified into a bladder or pitcher to trap the insects these plants are called insect eating or insectivorous plants example nepenthes bladderwort venus flytrap utricularia 5 phyllode sometimes the leaf petiole is modified into flattened green leaf like structure called phyllode it carries out photosynthesis example acacia melanoxylon vegetative propagation in leaf some plants like the bryophyllum have fleshy and thick leaves bearing buds on its edges these buds on the edges of the leaves grow as new plants when leaves fall down on the ground the buds start growing activity pluck a bryophyllum leaf and place it in between the pages of a book if you see it after 2 to 3 days you will find several new plants growing from the buds all along the edges